Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna to be taking a look at the Pi Book Pro. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I do wanna thank them for sending this unit over to me for review. And they did not tell me that they were sending it over. I just happened to look at my PO box and they left me a little note with the box and this is the contents. So I do wanna thank them for sending it over to me and it was a surprise in my part. Now I'm a huge fan of this type of setup. If you've seen my previous video before with the HP, I forgot the model number, but where I hooked up a Raspberry Pi directly to just a screen and a keyboard, that's basically what this is. It's a screen, keyboard, mouse, and a battery built in so it could power itself while you could hook whatever device you want into it considering that that device will support display link. Now what this is basically is a display link driver and it it's ran off USB-C. We don't have the HDMI or anything plugged in from the Raspberry Pi, it's just the USB and it basically runs that way. Now I will leave a link down in the description below to where you can get it. So they also gave me a code for a 15% discount. So if you guys wanna pick one up. Now this device itself only costs $79.99 and I think it's rather cheap for what it can do. It's a 1080 panel on an 11 inch screen and a keyboard and a mouse. The battery itself is 4,900 milliamp hours. It says it could run this guy for about six hours. Um, I think I had it on for more than that right now and it's still running. The only downside to it, it doesn't have a power meter. So I don't know how long it's gonna run before I have to recharge it. Now the setup on this guy to get the Raspberry Pi to work on this is a little quirky. It's not straightforward. It's not like you just plug it in and it should work. You do have to install display link drivers. They do have a video on how to do it. So you can follow that. On the side of this guy, you actually have one USB-C plug for the display port link. Then you have a USB out or USB plug and then a barrel connector for charging this guy. And it does come with a 12 volt charger. Now the version that I got is metallic blue and it's got like a gunmetal finish where the keyboard is the case itself is also blue but when you look at it one thing i did notice is that it's a fingerprint magnet like anytime i touch it with my fingers it just attracts fingerprints what i also noticed is that when you're opening and closing this thing is really really firm so it's like really hard to move back and forth and one thing i did notice is when you close the lid shut it doesn't close 100 percent. you really have to like squeeze it at the end just to close it 100 percent. typing with this guy felt just like one of those uh, small keyboards. I didn't have any problem with where the position was with the keyboard typing. So it was pretty good as far as the keyboard goes. It does have illumination. So at night you could actually still see the keys. You could turn on the backlight on these things. Uh, the touchpad works fine. It's not the greatest of the quality. Um, the push button where you have to push the left button is a little bit hard to push down. Other than that, it does work. Since this is a display link and it's not directly out of the HDMI, I was nervous about screen tearing. And usually when I played with older display link devices, they do have tearing because you are transporting that much data through a USB cable. And unfortunately for this, when I do play full screen videos, you will see a little bit of tearing on the video itself. So yes, that does still have effect on this. This doesn't have any speakers, which I wish they really put in. It would have been perfect if this thing supported audio. Now I did take this guy apart and I was trying to see if there's any room to actually squeeze an entire board in there, like a Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3A. But no, there's actually no room. The battery takes up most of the room. Then you have your DisplayPort uh, card that's taken up the other side of the laptop. And that's basically about it. There might be a little room that you could put in a Raspberry Pi Zero, maybe on the bottom where the touchpads are, but that's not much room to leave on this guy. Total weight of this is 2.6 pounds, so it does have a little bit weight to it considering the fact that this is an 11 inch laptop. But ultimately, I do enjoy using this guy because it types better than the HP one that I got and it feels a little bit more sturdy. Like I'm not taking apart stuff like the back of my HP just to get it to connect. I only had a couple of days experience with this guy. I did like using it, uh, using the Raspberry Pi. I did use other devices that I had, not Raspberry Pi. Now, as long as you install the display link drivers and Windows does have it, it's on. So you don't have to install it on Windows. It will work right away. So if you have a computer like this that you need to run and you need a screen for it, you could just plug this together and basically have your own little workstation with your monitor in this. Now, originally, there's there's a huge story behind this, which I'm not gonna get too much into, but you can find it on the website. And supposedly this was meant for an Android device. So you're gonna find buttons on here with the back home button and stuff like that in the search button, made for Android. And ultimately, I don't know what version of Android phone could work with this because you, again, you need display link. And my phone, the one that I have, which is uh, the LG, that didn't have a display link, so I wasn't able to get this to work off the bat. But 
originally this the idea was to get this to work on android devices but they changed their direction and moved it over to mobile devices like the raspberry pi or pine board or whatever it is that you got it seems to work out for the better because i like this type of device and the price is actually really good a 1080 panel and you have like the keyboard mouse backlit keyboard and it's portable with battery function i mean you can't get better than that really also another thing that i completely forgot to mention earlier before is that there was some sort of clipping on the screen uh, what i mean by this is that some of the screen panel seems to be overlaying the top of the screen where you can't see the entirety of the screen so yeah there's also that going on what i also tried was uh, powering it through the usb port and i was able to power raspberry pi 4 through the usb and you know connect the device back to itself using the USB-C, so that works as well. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's a whole mobile device. You don't need to carry an extra adapter just for your Raspberry Pi. You could run it right off the device. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this or you want me to test certain things on this, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.